What's up guys? So today we're going to talk about the Totem Acoustic Sky. It's amazing how... Alright, so for this video I'm not going to go over specifications. If you want that information I have a link to the product page down below in the description box because instead I want to talk about the story because the sky comes from some pretty rich lineage that I think you guys would be interested in and plus this is a great opportunity to tell you all what Totem had in mind when they designed the speaker and what their goals were. So let's get right to it. So the story actually goes all the way back to the first product that Totem ever made, the Model 1. And this was a very significant speaker at the time because in the late 80s, most audiophiles associated good sound with big speakers. And the Model 1 was really the first that made the statement that said, no, you know what, you don't need a refrigerator sized loudspeaker in order to enjoy an immersive high quality sound experience. Suffice to say the reviews were glowing and it was a product that really put Totem on the map. And another amazing thing is that this speaker has been around for over 20 years and while it's seen changes through that time span, it eventually became the Model 1 signature. I actually owned a pair of The Ones, which was their 20th anniversary model. The bottom line is by the end of its life cycle, it just became too expensive to produce. I believe it was actually priced close to four thousand dollars a pair and at that time totem knew it was well time to cut it from the lineup but what they decided to do is to build two other speakers the one speaker is a direct model one replacement and that's going to be coming out very very soon but the other speaker was going to be the totem sky So in a nutshell, the sky is a result of a pretty ambitious project because when they set out to make it, they wanted to achieve three basic goals. Number one, they wanted something that was below the 2000 US dollar price point. Number two, they wanted something that was more versatile than the outgoing Model 1. And then number three, they wanted something that could actually outperform the Model 1, which is pretty ambitious. And that leads me to the performance summary of this speaker and really to touch on whether or not they achieve their goals. So let's get right to it. So here's the deal. If you're looking for a super accurate studio monitor like experience, the skies aren't for you. If you're looking for something that's rolled off and warm and it just wraps around you like a Christmas blanket, then yeah, the skies aren't for you. But if you're looking for something that rides in between all of that, something that's not too soft, something that's not too bright, something that's easy to work with, something that sounds good across all types of music, then you should keep watching because I really feel like the skies make for a pretty compelling option at their price class. And let's start with the voicing. The voicing is definitely on the lively side of neutral. And by that I mean the top end is spiked up just a little bit. The mid-range on the top of the mid-range is just a little bit thin. But everything else is actually colorful. It's full of life and energy. So let's start off with the top end. The top end, like I said, is just a little bit tilted up, but I would say it's not bright, nor is it rough sounding. It's just, it's airy, it's spacious. And it's awesome because whenever you listen to a recording, let's just say somebody's strumming along the guitar, it captures all those little nuances that take place in such a simple movement. The sound of the strings, the sound of the resonance of going through the guitar body, it captures it in a way that is just unusual for the price point. And the same thing applies to the mid-range, which is very open, very clean sounding. It's not too warm, it's not too thin, and it just does this great job of extracting detail in such an effortless way. And best of all, it does it with this sense of, in my opinion, tonal accuracy that just makes for a very fun yet compelling listen. And then you have the bass. It really flows in line with what I just said. There's a little bit of spice to it, but by and large, it's clean, it's articulate, and the only time it'll ever sound a little bit woolly is if you put it on a fairly light stand. These speakers really do respond well to a very solid foundation, but other than that, I mean, they're just put together so well. And of course, you get the imaging, the imaging that Totem is known for, this just a massively immersive soundstage, and it actually passes a test that almost no speaker can pass, which is how it sounds out of the room. Usually when I step out of a room, and it doesn't matter if it's my room or somebody else's room, whenever music is playing, that usually 
reveals the system for what it is. Usually when I leave the room, it just sounds like speakers reproducing music. The magic usually is gone. But with the skies, in fact, just like with a lot of totems, the magic is there. There's no shifting in tonality at all. Everything is solid, it's full, and it just sounds like a musical event is taking place in your room. And that is supremely awesome. And it's great news for those of us who walk around as we listen. And then lastly, there's the dynamics. This is actually a pretty dynamic speaker for its size. Now, no, is it gonna punch you in the chest? Well, of course not. I mean, look at it, it's a compact monitor. But its ability to transfer a lot of energy and then stop on a dime is actually pretty impressive. And then, of course, there's the fact that it can sound good with just about any genre of music. I mean, I really haven't found its kryptonite. It sounds pretty good with classic rock, something that I find total monitors tend to struggle with. Alternative rock, um, hip-hop, uh, electronic dance, all forms of jazz, classical, even big-scale symphonic pieces sound pretty damn good and well-composed on these little speakers. So I would say Totem did a pretty good job, which leads me to the following. Did they achieve all of their goals? Well, let's talk about that. Ultimately, I'd say yeah. Mostly yeah. So here's the deal. When it comes to pricing, they clearly met their goal there. I mean, at $1,850 US dollars, that's notably below two grand, which I think is actually pretty impressive. But when it comes to the ease of use, well, this is going to be more of a mixed bag because on one hand, if you want to get consistently good sound out of them, then the good news is you don't have to work too hard for it. But if you want excellent sound, if you want to hear the things that I just spoke about, if you want to hear the things that other reviews have raved about, then you need to be prepared to roll up your sleeves a little bit and to work for it because while it's not going to require a lot of effort, you do need to pay attention to how they're positioned in your room. You need to give them a solid foundation, really good stands. You just have to consider that a part of the expense. And you do need to be careful with equipment matching. These are lively sounding speakers, so if you have bright, dry sounding gear, then that's not going to be the best match for this speaker. And you also want to give it some power. I'd say minimum 25 watts into 8 ohms, and that's with something with a good power supply, and preferably something more like 50 to 70 or more. So you need to just be aware of these things if you want to get the best you can out of these speakers. Because the last thing I want is for you guys to just blindly buy these speaker based off my review, expecting heaven to open up in your listening room, only to find that that's not the case. But I tell you right now, if you do those things, if you pay attention to some of the subtle details, then you're going to get some pretty good sound out of these. And that leads me to the third thing, which is, do they sound better than the Model 1s? And you know what? That's purely subjective. I can't comment on that with any kind of authority, but what I can say is if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely take the Skies. I think that they're just more fun to listen to. They're easier to listen to. They sound better with a wider variety of music, and ultimately, I do think they are the better speaker. And that leads me to my final thoughts. Look, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm between a rock and a hard place with this review just because, as many of you know, I really like the totem sound, and I have for many years. So I've tried not to let that bias influence this review, but, you know, here I am raving about these little speakers. But that's because they're genuinely great little speakers. They're a set of totems that, for the first time in a long time, I feel like I could recommend to just about anybody who's looking for this kind of sound. So overall, I mean, I think they just hit it out the park with the sky. It's uh, something that I feel that they've needed for a long time, and it's awesome to see them going in this direction. So yeah, the sky. It's a compact mini monitor that I think would make a lot of people happy, especially for somebody like me who values tone, who just likes something that is insightful, yet still easy and fun to listen to. Anyways, the Totem Acoustics, guys, pretty kick-ass speakers. Guys, that's just my review. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. Doo -doo, trouble, trouble, trouble. Oh, hi, guys. So this is kind of like my after credit scene, isn't it? <laughs> that's awesome. Anyways, I just wanted to follow up with my rave review, and yeah, let's call it what it is. It's a rave review of the sky, just to give you all some valuable context, because I think some of you are probably going to need it. And here's the deal. Whenever I review a product, I'm always comparing it to similar products, all right? So when I talk about the sky, I'm not talking about the sky as compared to speakers at twice the price or big floor standing speakers. No, I'm just comparing it with other products that I've experienced at the same price point and at around the same size. 
So hopefully that clears things up because I'm not calling him the best ever. Don't you, mm, no, don't you dare put those words in my mouth. But I am celebrating all the things that these speakers do well because quite frankly, I stand behind everything I said in this review. They're damn good speakers. They're fun. They're lively. They're energetic. Now they're not perfect. Obviously you do want to pay attention to the stands, blah, 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 all the things I mentioned before. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to go over that because yeah, I don't want anyone putting words in my mouth. Anyways, for realsies this time, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.